Awesome. Here we go. Here we go. We are officially live with <laughs> Dr. Jay LaGuardia. Everybody from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, coming in far, far away from the Midwest. <laughs> I'm tuning in. I'm your host, Johnny Ruder, tuning in from Atlanta, Georgia. And this is the Chiropractic Compass podcast and Facebook Lives. And it is brought to you by the legendary chiropractor online community. This is a very special broadcast for myself personally. Um, and I know I am so excited to dive in to all of that Dr. Jay LaGuardia has to offer us. Um, he's been a practicing chiropractor for, for many, many years. He's been in this profession for many years. He's a coach, lifestyle coach, um, practice consultant, management guy. He knows chiropractic business and he knows how to make chiropractic students and doctors very, very successful. Um, and I'm going to let him share his accolades, but I want to give you a brief history of behind the scenes of how we came to know each other. And that was way back in uh, undergrad at the University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire. We had a wonderful time and he actually um, owns and operates or co-owns and operates Stuckey Chiropractic Center in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is one of the largest chiropractic centers in the world, which is pretty incredible. And um, he is a phenomenal guy. I worked very closely with him, him, his wife, his, uh, um, I mean, whole entire family, pretty much. I was going to list all the people, but it's a family organization and it's awesome. So I was very excited, very honored to have you here, Doc. And uh, he is one of my largest mentors out there. He's doing huge things, and we'll talk about his podcast later in this podcast and um, everything that he has to offer. So, Doc, go ahead and give yourself a brief introduction of where you come from, who you are, and how you got into chiropractic and what you've been doing to help serve this profession for all these years that you've been a part of it. Well, thanks, Johnny. That's a ginormous question, so I'll try to, <laughs> try, to <laughs> I'll try to narrow it down just a little bit. Um, by the way, thanks for the the uh, introduction. It was great. Um, you know, I'm, you know me, right? I'm not I'm not the kind of guy who likes to uh, to gloat or acknowledge. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate. Um, I've been a part of this profession for now 30 years. I practiced for 25. Um, you know, I ran, as you mentioned, one of the largest clinics in the world. Um, I had at one time 10 clinics. I've been coaching, consulting chiropractors uh, for a better part of 15 years. Last few years, I've been coaching uh, business people and entrepreneur outside of the profession as well, so including as well, and all t varieties of types of businesses. Because here's the fact, man. Business is business. And so it is interesting when I have conversations with chiropractors, and it's, well, the chiropractic business is different. And that immediately tells me um, – that their business acumen is limited because business is business. Whether you're um, cutting hair, um, selling widgets, or if you're providing a, a chiropractic service. But my story really began, like so many, I had a condition. I played, uh, was playing football, and I got hurt. And uh, I was seeing the trainer. I wasn't getting any help. And so my mother had suggested I go see the chiropractor. And I'd never heard of a chiropractor before. And so uh, she took me to her chiropractor. His name was uh, Richard Rada, Doc Rada, in, uh, in Bricktown, New Jersey. That's where I went to high school. And uh, in this old Victorian home, and it was this cute, really dynamic practice that as soon as you walked in, you felt a shift in energy. And uh, his wife was outgoing and gregarious, and, and Dr. Rada was just, just you know, an awesome guy. Uh, it still is, by the way. And... Um, he checked me out and he goes, yeah, man, your, your trouble's here. And I go, yeah, it's in my shoulder. He goes, no, it's, it's up in your C71. <laughs> so he proceeded to adjust me and he adjusted my shoulder. By the way, he told me the story, but I didn't hear the story. You know what I mean? Yep. How many times does that happen? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot, exactly. So, so he told me the story and um, didn't hear it. All I was caring about, man, fix me because we got a game Saturday and, like, you know, it's, it's the uh, first game of state's playoff and, I was a quarterback, and I wanted to play, and I didn't want to let my teammates down. Anyway, he fixed me. I was great, good to go, and uh, we had a successful game. Um, so my career path was really uh, – I was um, on my way to be an orthopedic surgeon. I was taking my, uh, uh, my pre-meds and getting ready for my MCATs, and I was coming out of a local college when I saw Doc Rada doing a lay lecture holding his spine after I came out of biochem lab. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I popped in, and literally, I mean, you want to talk about a pivotal moment in your life. If I hadn't looked left that day, my life would be very different. I mean, <laughs> I, tell you, I looked left, and here he was, and he's holding his spine. I'm going, hey, that's Doc Rada. So let me pop in and say hello. And so I sat down, and it was just the beginning of his lay lecture. And for that, in, in that 15 minutes, changed my life. Because I finally heard the story, the above, down, inside, out philosophy. And it hit me like, like nothing had ever struck me before. And I said, this is so simple, but man, this is so elegant. It makes sense. It resonated with my core values as a person. I didn't even know what core values were at the time. <laughs> it came out, you know what I'm saying? And so this is, uh, uh, no one laugh on the line here, okay? Because uh, this was before cell phones and texting. I got in the car, drove home, and uh, I went and I said to my mother, said, uh, I'm giving up my pursuit to be an orthopedic surgeon. <laughs> you would have thought I told her that I wrapped my car around a pole. And she's like, what are you doing? And I said, uh, she thought I was going to go back into music full time. And I said, no, I said, I'm going to be a chiropractor. And she tried to talk me out of it. So, I mean, for no other reason, like, you know, from a career path at that point. Right. You know, she, she, <laughs> No, orthopedic surgeon, much better, great, better income potential. But <laughs> I made that decision. Uh, it changed uh, my my uh, my undergrad uh, degree or pursuit, and uh, I started a life in uh, 1986. And there was 16 of us that came down from our pre chiropractic club um, from a little community college in New Jersey. Nice, and, and we crushed it. You know, we really, <laughs> and and. And so to, to tie a bow on the story so people will understand, well, how the hell do you wind up in Eau Claire, Wisconsin? Because, man, prior to prior to going to Atlanta, I never even heard of Wisconsin other than the uh, TV show uh, Happy Days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and so in second quarter, I, went, I, I met my future wife, as you know, Dr. Pam. Yep. And uh, she's from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. But – the the key there to that story was, and, and that story is not all that unique. Is you know going to chiropractic school and finding your spouse there. It's not that unique, especially now when there's more is more females than you know uh, than there was when uh, we were in school. But uh, um, I met her father, and her dad was the uh, very well uh, world renowned chiropractor, Dr. Joe Stuckey, taught all over the world, uh, philosopher, huge DE speaker. And I met him in the second pivotal point, my life changed because as you mentioned before about mentorship, he was a mentor for me. Uh, he showed me what it took to be a professional. Mm -hmm. uh, he taught me about business. He taught me about what it took to be responsible as a doctor and serve from your heart and do it with love and compassion um, and to build a practice that way. And so we had the opportunity to come back to Eau Claire after graduating in 1990 and to mentor with him. And I wasn't going to pass that up, but I had no intention in staying. <laughs> of course you didn't. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes intention is uh, doesn't necessarily work out as, as you plan because the big guy has a different plan for you. And so we wound up staying and uh, we purchased the practice three years later and uh, we owned it for, well, see, it's been for, uh, I think there is it. A long time, 27 <laughs> years. It's been a long time. Awesome. So, so we took this really big practice and we innovated it. Mm -hmm. He was ready for it to be innovated. Um, and we took, um, you know, uh, a seven-figure practice and tripled it. And, yeah. and, um, and, you know, with a lot of hard work and a lot of, a lot of mistakes and, you know, but uh, so that kind of gets us to where we're at right now. And, yeah. and that's the story. Absolutely, Doc. I I love your story. I, I could listen to you talk all day um, about your your past and how you got into chiropractic. I think it's hilarious. Um, but you know, it, and it's it's interesting to think of just kind of the mindset that was going through your mom's head, just like whoa, <laughs> you know exactly. what the what in the world? What are you thinking? Um, and then look at you know the prosperous life that that you have and that you know chiropractic's given you this avenue um, to to enjoy this amazing, incredible life that you have. And I absolutely want students to be able to see that, which is why I bring on such successful people onto this podcast, because, you know, in school, as you can imagine, if you can remember, it, it's, it gets tough and the grind is, you know, always, always beaten down on you. But to bring on people that say, you know what, 
it's all worth it. You know, it's all worth it is, is something that I take and resonate with a lot. So thank you for that, Doc. Um, wonderful introduction, a lot of accolades, and uh, you, um, you've won Best Chiropractor of the Year two times now, have you not? That's correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big deal. That's a big deal. I think that's a, that's a huge deal. Um, so congratulations on that. And with that being said, let's, let's roll right into topics, Doc. Um, we sure. have three major topics on the docket. Number one are the three skill sets every Cairo must master. What are the three skill sets? And talk to us a little bit about those, and um, I'll ask questions along the way. Yeah, no, it's 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 a great place to start with. Um, I hosted a seminar this past weekend, and so here it is, 30 years after leaving chiropractic school, and I'm still teaching the same fundamentals. Yeah, you know why? Because they're tried and true. And fundamental and and skill set number one that everyone absolutely has to master is leadership. And there's three forms of leadership. There's private, public, and personal. And the most important of the three um, leaderships is personal. If we can't lead ourselves, we can't lead others. others. Um, it requires a self-discipline to acknowledge what you're weak at and just surround yourself with people who can um, help you and teach you and fill in the gaps to what you don't know. Uh, it's a level of humility and understanding that we don't have all the answers. Yeah. It's also being vulnerable and leading from the heart. Um, it's also acknowledging that um, growth is a constant endeavor. Um, personal development are the habits and rituals that we commit to, right, that transcend our con subconscious mind. And so to lead, we have to be on a path of constant, never-ending personal improvement because if we're going to lead others, they need to see us working and growing ourselves. Yeah. And then you create a culture of growth. So, Johnny, let me give you a story. Back in 1998, I had owned, we had owned the practice six years. And the practice was doing well from the outside in. But, mm -hmm. uh, but from the inside out, we hated it. Yeah. I, I hate going to the office. It wasn't because of chiropractic. It's because I was a poor leader and I did not have the skill sets not only to lead, but to to run a business of that size. Mm. And I was seriously considering leaving the profession. I thought I made the wrong choice, but it, that's not, and I know other there may be people on this line who have thought that before, but you didn't make the wrong choice. What I realized was, is I needed to expand my mind and my knowledge and learn the things that I was missing so I can um, effectively lead and create the practice that I wanted to. So I found a mentor, I found a coach. And I explained to him exactly what was going on and why we were having so much difficulty in the practice. And it took me about three or four minutes to tell him that story. And at the conclusion of my uh, diatribe, he says to me, Jay, he goes, I know exactly what your problem is. I'm like, awesome, tell me what it is. <laughs> and he says, and he says to me, and I quote, he goes, your practice is waiting for a leader to show up mm. and it's not you. Mm. That was the third pivotal moment in my life because it humbled me to get out of my head and my own ego because if it was really about the big mission, it's not about me. Yeah, It's about the people you serve. Mm -hmm. And I made it about me. So I hired this guy. He taught me everything about leadership. And then I studied. I took courses. I went to seminars. I read books. And we went from a very um, unhealthy environment because of the poor leadership to a dynamic thriving environment, as I'll get back to my point, is we created a culture of growth. And we only brought people on, not who wanted a job, yeah, who wanted an opportunity to learn and grow themselves so they become better versions of themselves so they can go out in the world and become chiropractors like you, John. Yep, yep. And, and all the other young students that we had go through. Some left to go on to start own businesses. And instead of leaving and, and you know, telling they're leaving and crying because they hated it there. Now when they leave, they come in and they cry because they don't want to go, but they're so thankful for what we taught them. Yeah. That they're forever indebted to the experience they had under our roof. Mm -hmm. So leadership is critical. Personal leadership is absolutely crit critical. Number two is communication. All life rises and falls on leadership and communication. Become the absolute best communicator you possibly can. 
your ability to influence, persuade, and persuade people. And I don't, and I'm not meaning manipulatively, but persuade people in an empowering way will drive and build your practice greater than any other skill set I know. Your ability to communicate in one-on-one -on -one and your ability to communicate in groups is essential if you're going to build a big practice or a successful practice. You know, one of the concerns I see sometimes when I go visit young docs, I'll ask them, what are you doing to build your practice? Like, you know, I'm on my Facebook or, you know, I'm doing this. And so what are you doing in the community? Are you networking? Are you meeting people? Are you taking people out to lunch? Are you just going into their business, introducing yourself and saying, hey, I'm new to the community? What do you like about this community? Tell me where the great restaurants are. Where do you work out? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Building relationships is part of, of, of building that practice. And so communication is essential. Let me bring this point up as well, too. A lot of chiropractors hate when I say this. But it's a fact. <laughs> Those are my are favorite. In, I know, I know, right? So <laughs> you're going to love this then. We are in the sales business. Mm -hmm. We are salespeople. Get over it. That's who we are. That's what we do. We're selling ourselves every single moment of every day. When people walk into our office, they're, you're immediately selling them based on the appearance, the feel, the energy, your staff, how well they're trained, the smells, the sound. They're, they're making an instantaneous um, judgment on whether you're the right place or not. And then as soon as you open your mouth, how do you speak? What do you look like? Do you look like health? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you congruent in action and behavior and thought and word? Mm -hmm. And so um, that communication is essential. And and. Um, I would encourage taking and seeking out communication courses because if you want to build your practice, as I mentioned, become a master communicator. And I'll get back to, this, this, to the sales part. I get a little off track there. <laughs> You're good. I love it. You know how I go. You yep. Know how I go. <laughs> so, so sales, right, when you embrace that you are selling, right, when you embrace that you're selling, it no longer becomes a negative. Because what we resist, it persists. So if you don't like to sell, guess what? You're not going to be good at selling. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to wonder why your practice is empty. So there's real skill sets mm -hmm. on how to sell. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've developed some absolutely rock solid, tested for t tens of thousands of patients, you know, that help free people from the bondage of insurance and letting them be free and you know, build a relationship with a patient based on value and and uh, and uh, and outcomes and goals, and and patients then pay freely of their own free will, and you know they're not asking questions. Does my insurance cover this? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's your favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And 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 the and the, um, uh, and the third habit, as you know, I kind of I kind of molded them together is sales. Okay. Right. So, so leadership, communication, and scales and sales um, will scale your business faster than you could ever possibly imagine. And um, so, if you're a young chiropractor or if you're about to get out of school, uh, I would be spending all free time that I possibly have is sharpening my leadership skills, becoming the best communicator I know. And how do you do that? You got to go out and communicate. Yep. Right. Uh, great new resource I just found and I started been listening to um, the author's name is Arthur Joseph uh, Joseph and his book is called Vocal Awareness. It's it's the power of influence of using your voice. Mm. Right. Even, even your tone and how it resonates and preparing your voice to speak. Yeah. And as we know, 93 percent of all communication is nonverbal. And so knowing the messages that you're putting out subconsciously. That people are looking at you, going, "Nah, I'm not buying what you're putting out." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. How do you over you overcome that? Absolutely, absolutely, Doc. Woo! That was that was jam packed docket number one topic. That was huge. So let me recap for you. Did a great job, Doctor J, of recapping. But I want to I want to make this as student friendly as possible, as well as doctor friendly, because Doctor J handles the docs. I'll take care of the students and <laughs> nice. we'll, we'll go from there. But um, number one, leadership. How can you start leading now in, you know, on campus, uh, in your chiropractic school? 
get involved in organizations, no matter what that might look like for you, any technique club, any um, other affiliated organization on campus, such as possibly student council or life force for life specifically, um, ambassadors, whatever it is that helps you lead others to resonate with your same exact message. Number two, communication. Uh, communication, get out, go to Toastmasters, like Dr. J was saying, go find things that help you become the best person you can possibly be when that relates to communication. And sales, sales guys, stick around the legendary chiropractor online platform. I promise you, I, I over deliver with free content when it comes to sales and business and marketing. Um, we have a free PDF on our website uh, and also not to mention there are tons of great books. Dr. J, you mentioned one great book to use your voice, but there, I mean, I'm sure you have a list and a of books you've read and books you're going to read on business and money and finances and understanding how to relate that to chiropractic and meld it into making a successful chiropractic practice. So that's, that's for the student mindset. Um, Dr. J, three skill sets every chiro must master. I think after they watch this video once, twice, a hundred times, they will have those three things mastered. <laughs> what do you think? I, 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 to, I, I totally agree. You know, and, and just a touch on, on the leadership side of yeah. it. It's a, it's skill set. It's not inherent. It's yeah. not like Johnny, you're born as a great leader. And so therefore I'm not, it's not the way it works. And everyone is, every one of us is a leader in our own capacity. And so don't use the, the, the excuses that I'm not. That's, you know, we're just mis we're, we're misleading ourselves to not allow ourselves to step up to our greatness. Absolutely. Amen to that. So and you mentioned about being a reader. Yes. You know, got to read. Everyone needs to read students. You need to read. You need to open your mind to great content that fills you up, that, that nourishes you, that that allows you to expand and think in, 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 uh, in, in, in expansive terms. Yeah. So not Guyton's physiology. <laughs> I, said, I said expansive, <laughs> not subconscious. <laughs> oh, talk about some uh, talk about some brain waves putting you to sleep. Um, anyways, bullet number two, topic number two: How and why daily rituals and adopting daily rituals into your life is so vital and critical to your success as a chiropractor and as a chiropractic student. Go ahead, Doc. You know, every individual I've ever worked with, either um, in my practices or um, um, people that I'm fortunate enough to consult with, I always start with who they are. Mm. Because growing people grow businesses. And if you aren't working on growing your mindset and freeing yourself of the limiting beliefs that we all hold, Every single one of us has these limiting beliefs. So what I really try to understand is what the individual, what limiting beliefs are, does the individual hold that is holding them back from taking action? Because that's usually the first case. So I'll give you a perfect example. There's many times, you know, I, I teach courses. Maybe there's two, 300 people in a room and I can teach a technique specific as it relates to sales or communication and half of them will apply it. Right. And or let's say 100 percent apply. Fifty percent of them will get lousy results. Yeah. I mean, just terrible results. Twenty percent will apply and absolutely crush it. Right. And 30 percent will apply and get eh, eh, results. Yeah. So what's the difference? Right. It's the same technique all applied the exact same way. Right. It's the individual who's applying it. Mm -hmm. It's who we are at that moment in time. How we apply it will determine the outcome. Yeah. So it's so it gets back to the be, not to do. As as you know, one of the things I, I always say is, life is not about what you do; it's about who we're becoming. And as you grow, your life grows. So, um, when I first left chiropractic school. I was way, way far away from a fi finished product. I'm still long away from a finished product. Yep. But I had to learn it how to be a professional. I had to learn how to um, to think big, and so I got introduced to um, daily success rituals. And those success rituals first start with preparing my mind for success each day. 
So I first started to learn, um, first thing I got up in the morning is I would meditate for 20 minutes and just prepare my mind, relax my mind, slow my brain waves down so I can begin to visualize and see my outcome for that specific day. I would literally, Johnny, I would literally see my office. Yeah. Even sometimes transcend above the office like I was floating. I mean, it's weird, but it's true, man. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, and and I can literally see my reception room. As you know, it's huge, right? Yeah, yeah. The reception room is 1,400 square feet. You know, it's got 25-foot <laughs> ceilings. And I see that reception area just jam-packed with people, people having fun, laughing, hugging, giving high fives, lines to check in, lines to check out. Mm -hmm. And... I would I would uh, feel the sunshine shining through the window and, 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 and radiating. I would hear the music playing and, and the staff laughing and have fun. So you build your business in your mind first. So I started to visualize the practice that I want to have. Some people may wonder, well, when you went into a really successful practice, did you already have a, a, a practice to start with? And the answer was no. Yeah. No one was handed anything when they start there. So I quickly built the largest practice in the largest practice, you know, where I was seeing three to, uh, 350 to 400 people a week, and I did that for well over 15 years. Yeah, It's because I built it here first, and I built it from a vision, right? So I created a vision by meditating. I started to do affirmations. What an affirmation is is putting declarative statements in my mind which with repetition over time seeps into your subconscious mind and unwires the old negative loop or limiting beliefs that we held about ourselves previously. Because, Johnny, if you ask Dr. Pam, I was probably the most negative, surly, angry SOB you ever met when we first started dating. <laughs> ask her that. She'll tell you that. She may even admit I'm still that way now. I don't know. You're from Jersey, Doc. It's all I'm right. <laughs> Exactly. And I asked her, I said, you know, we joke now because we've been married 30 years. Said, so what did you see me in me? I said, beside my boyish good look, she said potential. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, Dr. Pam. Good answer. <laughs> exactly. So I knew if I, if I was going to create this business and have the great relationships and marriage and, and, you know, with my children, and believe me, I've made plenty of mistakes. So that I don't have a perfect life. Um, but I work really hard at it. It's because of these daily rituals and habits that I've applied in my life that I still do this very day. I still do every day. In fact, before you and I got on the call, I centered myself. I cleared my mind, right? I um, um, uh, repeated my own persona statement, mm -hmm. you know, how I want to per be perceived um, big, um, as far as my greatest self. And, uh, and I prepare myself for each, each situation intentionally. You know, one of one of my favorite. I got to share this with you. I wrote this the other day. You know, mastery is 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 a natural inclination. It's a deep expression, something within each and every one of us. It's primal. It's it's wired to our to our in our DNA, and it's not driven by ego or materialism. And when we alienate ourselves from mastery, in other words, when we're not pursuing it, um, we feel unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. We, we feel pain, suffering, disappointment, and frustration. It's our life task to bring mastery to fruition. And it's achieved when we're pursuing our goals and our dreams. And so to, to tidy that up, right, that's why I do daily rituals. Yeah. Because the pursuit of self-mastery never ends. And becoming a better version of yourself is something you do every single day. And it doesn't matter where you are on your journey. You could start at any time. Yep. And it's about 1% improvement every single day. And as we know, our outer world reflects our inner world. So if you want more love, more peace, more happiness, you want more joy, you want more abundance, right? You become that first within, and then your world begins to reflect that on the outside. Yeah, absolutely. It's changing. It's it's literally epigenetics. If we want to take it that far, you kind of change. You change it, right? I mean, absolutely. Yeah, well, it's, you rewire change, your DNA. Absolutely, you change the gene expression. Absolutely, no question about it. Yeah, yeah. Thoughts are powerful. Thoughts are very, very powerful. And that's a whole. That's a whole nother podcast. I think yeah. <laughs> we could go and, into and, the three T's if we really want to. 
Invite me back. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. With you. <laughs> Absolutely, Doug. You're always invited. All right. So with that, how and why behind? So we got meditating and affirmations. Is there any any other? Yes, what? visualization. Yep. Yep. And also goal setting. Goal You'd be setting. surprised how many people that I talk to say they have goals, but if I ask them if they're written, they're not written down. Yeah. And so when they're not written, there's a lack of clarity. And so goals help create clarity, and they, those goals should be categorized in the different areas of life. But if we're just talking about business here tonight, it should be based on, you know, what goals you want to create specific as it relates to new patients and services and income. And, and by the way, let me, let me make that, and you know this, this is one of our core beliefs, right? And, you, and I'll mention this that when you talk about your next question. <laughs> but core beliefs define who you are as an organization. Right. So one of our core beliefs is when you take care of the patient according to their needs, your needs will be met, which essentially means is, is we do the right thing for the right reason, not because it's expedient or because it serves our pocketbook. Yeah. It allows us to do the right. thing. That's how you create an exceptional reputation, you know, in a medium sized community over 60 years, not a single blemish. Yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> but I, as I a dog, as a dog barks. I would, <laughs> I would, I would also argue to to just kind of expand on that, and that is what I I've had this thought after I've talked to I, I think twenty different docs now about you know sales, business, chiropractic, whatever it might be on this show. And chiropractic business is sales, but it is different because of what you just said right there. You you do it out of an abundance without expecting anything in return, but you're selling because you know how valuable and important chiropractic care is to your community, to that individual who walks in your door. Would very, you? Very true. Yeah. Very true. And in fact, I was talking to a, a young doc today who just graduated, who you know, and uh, and we were having the conversation because he just recently opened his doors and, and I just feel blessed to be able to work with him because he worked with us, right? <laughs> Went through chiropractic school, and now I get to be his his coach, which awesome. is which is cool. Um, but uh, you got I another one to, in the pipeline here. Hey, hey baby, I'm waiting <laughs> for you. But I said to him, I said, look, you know, because we, we were working on the business side, we we're working on on his plans, his financial plans, and I said to him, I said, the hardest thing to do as a young doctor is make recommendations that are based that are based on. Uh, what is best for the patient, not based on what you think they can afford. Yeah. Because when you come out of school, you have a scarcity mentality. Absolutely. And you can't create abundance from a scarcity. Right. So it's <clears throat> imperative that we look at the patient, right, in totality and truly understand who's in front of us and what they what they need and tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. Let them decide if it doesn't work. And as you're, and if you're a good communicator, more times than not, they're going to they're you're going to close that case mm -hmm. and they're going to become a really long term, potentially even a lifetime patient or practice member for you. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I'm excited for him, too. He's, he's going to crush it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, last last question, last topic. I want to jump in here. Um, developing a mission, vision, core values and goals. That is a lot. Please take it. One step at a time for us. I, I want you to take as much time as you need because I want people to take as much value from this podcast episode as they possibly can. And I know you have a ton, a ton of to offer on this very specific topic. So I usually do a full weekend course in this. So I'll try to condense <laughs> it and not have well, anybody we'll, go to we'll sleep. We'll see everyone. We'll still be doing this Sunday. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> listen. What I'm about to share with you is not earth shattering or new, but what I've learned in life and business, not just for myself, but people that I work with, is that you can't accomplish anything unless you know where you're going. And so that starts with a clear vision. And particularly, let me, let me speak to the students. I know it's, um, it could be daunting while you're in school to be thinking only about school because you're in survival mode. It's like, how the hell do I get through this and get the hell out of here? Right? Um, but you gotta expand how you think. You gotta start thinking about what your future looks like. Because if you can't put it in your mind, you can't create it. And 
essentially, Johnny, when I was talking about before about visualization, when you visualize using all of your senses, you create a vibratory shift within every cell of your body that creates a level of attraction that I can't explain. It's way beyond, right? It's metaphysical, yep. right? It's quantum physics, yep. way beyond my understanding. <laughs> but I get it. I get it enough to yep. understand that the clearer you become and, and understand the power of your vision, it will attract people, places, and things into your life that you couldn't even imagine. And it starts with that clear vision. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you don't even have to articulate it. It's just it's just resonates so much. That is, it's, it's wavelengths, it's energy, and that energy comes back to you. So it may come as a new opportunity, right? It may come as, as when someone that you meet that says, you know, hey, I got, I got a great opportunity, and you align specifically with that philosophy of that practice and that, bi- and that, and that business. You don't know. So start creating and carving out a vision for yourself, even if you're going to be work for somebody else. And Johnny and I, you and I have talked about putting a program together for young docs and, and associates because when I was down there, we spoke to a to a hundred students. I think we really opened their eyes about how they can find and attract a really dynamic and good mentorship and associateship for themselves. But that's a whole nother conversation. That's so a third. That's, that's a third episode with you. That's a third episode. <laughs> So let's talk mission. So what's mission? The mission is why did you become a chiropractor? So somebody said, well, is that mission purpose is the same thing? Eh, can be. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, to me, purpose, how I define it is my purpose, my purpose in life. Why am I put here on this earth? Right. And your mission is how does my purpose affect what I do? Mm-hmm. So my mission serves my purpose. Okay. So in this particular case, my my purpose was to inspire lead, inspire and lead and empower millions of people to live happier, healthier, and more prosperous lives. Now I've done that through a variety of business platforms, obviously chiropractic and, and consulting, but we got a really large cons- uh, um, um, real estate company, you know, that's killing it. Um, so even you know even though the 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 structures that we build, I want people to have really wonderful homes that they can raise a family in that they feel feel proud to be a part of that I feel proud to to put my name behind mm-hmm. so it's 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 that it's that purpose and that purpose you know travels with you whatever you do yeah okay and so then your mission how is it does your work support your mission i heard a heard a saying the other night it's not mine i wish it was <laughs> is that we should work twice as hard on ourselves than we do on our work Say that one more time. We should work twice as hard on ourselves than we do at our job. Amen. Yep. Okay. So because the better you get at you, the better you get at doing you as it relates to, you know, the stuff that you do day to day. Yep. I got a little sidetracked there, but that gets back to your purpose. Now, the, the next thing is values. I'm going to really touch on values because values are critical. We all have values whether we know it or not. The question is, do we, can we identify our core set of values? And it's typically seven to 10 core values, right? That if I was to cut you, Johnny, and you were to bleed and your core values came out, I can see that you're, you're a guy of integrity, right? You're a guy of passion. You're a guy about family, a guy about health, Mm -hmm. right? I can cut you and see that's who you are, right? You, you embody those values, correct? Yeah. I can see it. So, When you have a clearly defined core value, then what it does is it clears all the haze and the fog. Let me explain. When I work with a client and we're talking about key decisions and I ask them and I say, they'll say to me, I don't know if I should do this or not do this. And they'll say, well, let's look at your core values because I have them do this this exercise. Mm -hmm. I'll say, does this decision align with your vision and your core values does it serve you moving forward or does it move you away from your mission and vision and the only way you can determine that does it align with your core values Mm -hmm. right yeah okay so now it becomes much clearer and easier to be a decision maker right so guys like you and i you know as assertive personalities we're decisive 
we make a decision, then we make that decision right, as opposed to making a decision hoping it's right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so I have every single client clarify. There's a whole exercise. It's actually in my book, how to do this: change your mind, change your destiny, and. Then what I have them do, Johnny, is measure how congruent they're living in that value. So let's say it's fitness, mm-hmm. and you know they're not exercising. Um, you know um, they 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 you know they park in the handicapped parking lot at the grocery store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like instead of uh, taking the stairs up to the apartment, they take the elevator. So the point is, is that if we were to score that on a scale of zero to ten, they're probably a two or a three. Right. Right. So now watch, the last is setting goals. When you set your goals based on your core values, goal setting becomes easy. Mm -hmm. Because now as I'm setting my goal in fitness, I want to take my core value of fitness, which I'm scoring at a three, (laughs) and I want to take it to a six. Yep. So now what action steps do I need to take to take that from a three to a six? Okay, well, I'm just going to start working out two days a week. I'm going to park in the back of the parking lot, and I'm going to walk into the grocery store, and I'm going to start taking the steps, all right? I'm just going to be more active, all right? So I just took it from a three to a six. So I set my goals. When do I want those? You know, when do I want to achieve it by? And you do the same thing in your business when it relates to adding employees or adding services or doing a marketing campaign or um, increasing your PBA, which is – how often a patient sees you in their lifetime, or to become more profitable. By the way, Johnny, I want you to understand, I want your listeners to understand, being profitable is a good thing. Yeah. Right? From my heart, spiritually, I believe that uh, our maker wants us to be abundant because when we're abundant, we can help others. Mm -hmm. We can serve others, right? We should serve others even when, when we're not making a ton of money. You can do so in other ways, but when we're abundant, we can help other people and help rise, you know, elevate other people. Besides, when we're abundant, we create the velocity of money. Every time we spend a dollar, and you know, it, other people spend that dollar, and that's what drives our economy. So mm-hmm. we're designed to be abundant. And so, setting goals, right? First of all, clarity of vision. Identify what your purpose is. Why are you here? How does it serve your mission? Right, as a chiropractor, because this is the reason why you get up each and every day, right? Yeah. When you, when you live, Johnny, when you live from this point of view, you get up in the morning, you go, thank God. Yep. Instead of hitting the alarm and going, oh, God, not another day. <laughs> yep. All right. Clearly define um, core values, and your core values will help you set your goals. And, and then now what happens is, is what I call harmony and congruency. Is an internal harmony knowing that you're on the right path and you're living congruent with who you are. Yeah. And when you follow that path, you are on the path of self-mastery. Yep, which all ties back to everything we talked about at the very beginning. <laughs> Dude, it all comes it, around. It all, it all ties together. And I think that's the greatest thing about you know these three topics that you chose, that, that you brought up and mentioned to me. I it, We had to... We, it, we would have been foolish if we didn't speak on them. And I think that the self mastery is something that a lot of people are constantly working on, but sometimes they don't have, including myself, don't have the proper stepping stones to get to the next step or to get to the next level that, um, that they should be at or they think they should be at. Right. And it becomes really challenging, especially now pertaining to chiropractic students, especially as a student, we're in the trenches, you know, and, and you can call the practice trenches. I call school the trenches. I, I mean, we're there. We're, we're grinding it out and, and doing the best we can to pass boards, pass midterms week, this week and next week. I mean, there are things that we have to do, but that all, I think if you take that and you look at it all as a journey on your journey of self mastery, I think that it, it completely like we we're talking about with the energy completely shifts it. it it turns it it turns it a 180 and and you start thinking differently you start acting differently and you start being differently no question let me let me let me kind of uh, summate what you were just saying absolutely here. so my 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 current mission as a consultant is to empower people and awaken them to the power of conscious awareness 
right? That's living in the moment. You know, in chiropractic, we call it present time consciousness. Yep. When we're in the moment, we're being intentional. You see, the routine is never routine when we're, when we're living intentionally. And so when we're living intentionally, we're in the pursuit of self-mastery. We're, it's the only path to self-mastery. Yeah. Conscious awareness, intentional living results in achieving um, self-mastery. And the key, Johnny, is the habits that I talked about, the daily habits and rituals, mm-hmm. help keep you on track. Right. Because life is going to pull you off, man. Life happens. Yep. It's going to kick you in the face. It's going to kick you even below the belt. <laughs> yep. And it's not going to feel good. Yep. So what do you do when adversity comes? Right? You embrace it. You give thanks for it. Or do you resist it again, which then you get more adversity. Yeah. And, and try to find the inherent lesson. Because remember, failure is not defeat. Defeat is a choice. So conscious awareness leads to intentional living, leads to um, achieving self-mastery. Absolutely. And, you know, when it comes to self-mastery, I want to circle back to everything that, not everything, I'm not going to redo the whole entire podcast here, <laughs> but what I do, I circled things that I think are very important that, that we need to take away from even the beginning. And there's like, I think I circled three or four things that we need to make sure that we're doing and that we get as clearly as possible out to our audience uh, and viewers. So the first one is I, I wrote down, I don't know if you said this or if I wrote it down, it just says our future is up to one person and that's you, that's yourself. And if you, if you work on yourself, if you are constantly putting time and energy and, and passion and compassion into yourself, that's what you will give out. And that is what attracts more people to be around you. That's what attracts people into your office. No matter if you're a doc, if you're a student, it's what attracts people to be your friend. It's what attracts people to, you know, come see you in outpatient clinic and get adjusted. That I think is really important. So working on yourself, number one, I took away from this podcast. And that is something that you have to constantly be doing. And that all ties back to that self mastery as well. I would agree. And, and, I want your, your listeners to truly understand this, is that you don't have to go it alone. In fact, yeah. you need mentors. Mm-hmm. Your ability to um, velocitize your success occurs when you surround yourself with mentors, coaches, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, li- I don't even want to say like-minded group because if you're the smartest person in your group, you need to find a new group. Right. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and Johnny too, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to success, there's a price to pay for success. Yeah. Right? Everything costs something. The question that each each person listening has to ask themselves is what am I willing to pay? Because mm-hmm. if you're not willing to pay a price, you're not gonna get to where you want to go. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. You know, to get where I've gotten and other people who've, who've achieved success, you know, it's easy for me to sit here and tell you all the great things, man, but there's a lot of down days. Right, right. There's a lot of mistakes. Yeah. You know, a lot yeah. of self-reflection, a lot of pain. Yeah. But that, that, that comes multifaceted though. You're not, you know, those sacrifices aren't just financially, right? Those are, those are life sacrifices, things that, you know, things happened. Um, you, you might have failed once, twice, a million times, but you got back up, you did it again. Not the same thing, hopefully, <laughs> but you changed, <laughs> you changed what you did, um, and made it successful because like you said about, you, you know, yourself earlier, it's the fact that you make a decision and then you make it come true. It's not, you make a decision and then crap, that you didn't work. True. Yeah, that right. did, that, it's a dud. Let's go back to the drawing board. No, you're going to make that happen, you know? And that's, that's the, that's the truth. Second thing I circled and wrote down, growing people grow businesses. And that is, I want to add one word to that is successful businesses. Would you allow me to do that? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, growing people. <laughs> grow successful businesses. And that is, that's something you said earlier in this podcast. And I wanted to write it down and circle it because again, you got to work on you before you can help other people and before other people want to even come see you. So, uh, that that's huge. 
And uh, I wrote down to be, not to do. We kind of talked about that already. Um, be who you are saying you are. That goes back to core values. That goes into goal setting. That goes into live a congruent life. Um, and not only in present time consciousness, but live a congruent life in present time consciousness. Uh, and then the last thing I wrote down and circled was attract people, places, and things you would never imagine. And that's something, Dr. J, I don't know if you know this or not, but you say that a lot. And I've heard you say this a lot because you, you it, it means so much to me because I don't think you know how much it means to people when you say it. But it's like chiropractic, um, your family, your spouse, whatever it might be in your life that that brings you joy and happiness, but there are things that you are doing for other people that will also allow them to catapult into attracting people, places, and things into their lives that they never would have imagined if it weren't for that pivotal moment with yourself. So I think that it's important. I think that's an important concept to take away. Yeah. And, and really what you're talking about is, is taking responsibility, taking responsibility for everything that's in your life because it is a reflection of the decisions that you've made. Yeah. And if you want something new, you have to be and act differently. Yeah. And so, um, by the way, you, you can't grow or change until you take responsibility for those things. If you give away that ownership and blame it on somebody else and choose to be a victim, well, guess what? You're never, you're never transcending your current level. Yeah. You're always a victim at that point. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then uh, I want to end with this clear vision. Um, we talked a lot about meditating, affirmations, goal setting, and envisioning or visioning, whichever one <laughs> you want to <laughs> say. Um, visualize what you want out of your life, no matter if that's for the whole entire day or the next hour or the next minute. Whatever it might be, if you visualize a test as a chiropractic student, visualize a successful adjustment as a chiropractic student because we're in a very vulnerable and learning environment. And even when you got, get out into practice, I'm sure Dr. J will, will back me on this. It's, it's, it's called practice because we're constantly learning. There's always new things. And, you know, you said, you said, I got, I, I'm, I'm where I'm at today, but I got a long way to get to, get to the next part of myself or, you know, the end goal. And if you ask me, there really is no end goal, but you got to keep setting it so that you chase after something else because your goals of yesterday are what you have today. So that's, I think that's a really powerful takeaway. And uh, so clear your vision, clear your haze. Any last comments, Doc? I want you to have this opportunity to say anything you want to chiropractic students, to doctors of chiropractic. How can they better get in touch with you for your services? Um, if you are willing to provide them or just a contact to be a mentor and somebody to look up to like I do. Okay, so <clears throat> the best way to get a hold of me would be, <clears throat> excuse me, is I can be reached on Facebook at Dr. J. LaGuardia. Um, that's my Facebook fan page. Um, the second best way is via email. And Johnny, you had mentioned my podcast before. Yes, and please it's, mention it's called, that. Yeah, so it's called Power, Passion, Prosperity. And it's all one word, Power, Passion, Prosperity, um, podcast with Dr. J. And it's on all your uh, major podcast platforms. Um, and um, we do a similar style as you do here. We interview people in, 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 in all walks of life who are just killing it. And, and sharing their stories. They were in season two right now. And, and so we have some amazing interviews, uh, with best selling authors and business magnets and things like that. So it's cool. The first season I did was on the eight habits of success. So I dive deep in each one of the habits and we spend and we drill down on it and how to apply it to your life. And all those episodes are available on your favorite podcast. The thing that I would recommend is to go to our website powerpassionprosperity.com, again, all one word, and sign up to be a member. It's free. And a lot of this great content I'm talking about that I blog and I vlog with, um, we put out there. Um, a lot of great content on there about leadership and culture and personal development. All this stuff is free. All you have to do is sign up uh, to be a member. 
Um, but my email address, if you want to contact me directly, and I will get back to everyone um, who, who reaches out to me, it's really simple. It's Dr. J, D-R-J-A-Y, at triplepeelife.com, T-R-I-P-L-E-P. L-I-F-E, triple P life.com. And if you're not listening to the podcast, the triple P life is power, passion, prosperity. So, um, and then also, um, you can follow me on Instagram at Dr. J. LaGuardia. And of course, like I said, Facebook. So that's probably Johnny, the best way to, to, uh, to reach out and get a hold of me. And I will respond to everyone who reaches out. Awesome. I'm typing it up, uh, right now and it is on the screen. There it is. <laughs> Johnny, you, you had mentioned, you had mentioned, and I want to say this, right? It's, it's kind of as a final statement. Every one of us has greatness within us. Yeah. Every one of us is designed to live an abundant life. All you need to do is tap into the greatness within you. Mm -hmm. And some of the things we discussed today helps you do so. And believe that you deserve, because you do. Yeah. And most importantly, you're in the, one of the most amazing, probably the most amazing profession in the world, because we get to we get to influence and impact people with our hands and with our minds. And the power of the adjustment never underestimate. And as I mentioned before, right, right, the routine is only routine when you're not intentional. Mm -hmm. When you're in that adjusting room, you always need to be intentional. Because, as I believe BJ said, it's, it's your innate, their innate, and universal innate together allows the full expression of life to come through. Yep. Yeah. Everything you said is true. That's all I got to say. Um, <laughs> so reach out. The I put all of Dr. J's information here. Power, Passion, Prosperity Podcast. All one word. Um, you can find that on all of the major podcast platforms. I think it's on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, all of those. You can head to PowerPassionProsperity.com. Sign up for all of their free content. I would imagine you just put in your email, Doc. Is that true? That's correct. Awesome. So, And then next thing is his email. He said if you reach out to him, he will reach back. Dr. J at TriplePLife.com. And then last but not least, he didn't mention this, but he mentioned it earlier in the podcast, his book, Change Your Mind, Change Your Destiny by Dr. Jay LaGuardia. And he uh, talks all about all of these topics that we discussed tonight and probably way more, <laughs> probably okay. way more because that's just the kind of guy he is. He gives out of an abundance of his heart without expecting anything in return. And that's what all chiropractors should be, do and are with that being said doc i'm gonna put in a shameless plug here for myself and uh we will uh sign off in just a moment so with that being said thank you all of you so much we got so many reactions i i was watching viewership go up and down up and down that's just the story of my life and success and then <laughs> uh and so thank you for tuning in to um the chiropractic compass podcast and facebook lives Brought to you by the legendary chiropractor. Again, we're here with Dr. Jay LaGuardia and myself, your host, Johnny Reuter. Thank you so much for all of your support through the legendary chiropractor.com and online platform. And docs out there, chiropractors out there, if you are looking to hire somebody for your office, CA, licensed massage therapist, associate doctor, independent contractor, or you're looking to sell your practice, whatever it might be, reach out to me and head to postachiropracticjob.com right now to post your chiropractic job advert with us on the legendarychiropractor.com. So with all that being said, students will be able to find it, doctors will be able to find it, and it comes with a amazing Facebook Live with yours truly. <laughs> and we talk all about your job gig and why your job is the best in the business and why student, doc, looking for a change or fresh out grad needs to be in your office working for you. So reach out to me, post a chiropractic job.com right now to post your chiropractic job advert with us on the legendary chiropractor, Dr. J. Thank you, sir. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for being an incredible human being to this profession, to your family, to myself. And, um, I mean, you, you over delivered to say the least doc. <laughs> 
I appreciate that, man. It's it's always a fun hanging out with you and having a conversation. We did this for many, many years. And I just want to say one last thing. You know, go empower your dreams, ignite your passion, and accelerate prosperity. Amen. Amen. We're going to sign off with that because that is too good to not. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Um, I Take- will see you guys.